Uh, so I was a family doc uh, working in uh, the Maritimes, Canada, and uh, I ran across uh, uh, a possible option to go and complete my family medicine residency and learn a form of short-term therapy. And I was interested in that because as a family doctor, I was finding so many patients would come to my office and come to the emergency department with symptoms that I couldn't seem to help out with, and I knew there was something going on, but I couldn't put my finger on what it was, and I didn't seem to be able to help those people. So I was very frustrated about that. And so uh, I ended up going to McGill, completing my residency and spending most of that year working with uh, Dr. Davenu's program, which is a program of short-term therapy built for patients who are treatment resistant, often with psychosomatic problems and difficult to treat. So I, my first real exposure to psychotherapy was a model that was built for uh, working with resistant patients. And by resistance, I mean patients who um, unconsciously put up barriers in the therapeutic relationship who are complex in that their anxiety can interrupt their thought flow or cause a lot of psychosomatic problems uh, or other obstacles that, that will be presented in treatment making it more complicated. So uh, that's where that model is built for and uh, that's what we've been you know, researching and teaching over the last 20 years now. What we learned is that resistance of this type of resistance, which is unconscious resistance, is a d direct product of attachment interruptions in the past leading the person to naturally avoid be, being open and close to others, including us professionals. So automatically when they see the concern on our face and, and us trying to help them, it brings up all their attachment emotions and all the anxieties and habitual patterns they've learned to avoid those emotions and anxieties. So that all gets activated in the treatment relationship with us. And that can slow down, stall, or completely interrupt treatment. A person can even get worse if that's not addressed. But we actually know more than just uh, try to deal with it, we actually use that therapeutically. So we use the therapeutic attachment to examine all these emotions from attachments before they get triggered, help them deal with the somatic components, help them deal with behaviors that they automatically bring to avoid those feelings, and help them process the feelings by actually experiencing them. And in my experiencing, I mean not a cognitive process, but actually somatically, physically experiencing them. So, and when they can start to experience these emotions, the somatic symptoms reduce or stop usually within a few meetings of that, and uh, the anxieties and depression and start to diminish or stop sooner than later. And the personality structure, meaning that's the habitual patterns of relating, uh, start changing around. They get more comfortable with being open with others, and that makes changes that we find tend to increase in follow-up uh, from research, and a lot of the research studies are showing that. They actually make more gains in, in follow-up. And the other thing uh, may be relevant to here is uh, people with more severe mental illness, say uh, psychotic episodes, uh, bipolar disorder, um, uh, other kind of more severe conditions, they also have attachments that have been interrupted uh, in many cases. And that attachment trauma uh, leads to a whole range of very strong emotions triggered when they get in a care situation, like a residential situation or a therapeutic relationship outside. And they can often get flooded uh, with, with strong emotion, strong anxiety, that can lead to sometimes a tendency towards self-injury and things if it's not handled. But again, we want to use that therapeutically and help them to improve their relational function, improve their anxiety tolerance. Then that allows the other care to help. Like, you know, if you think about the multiple care elements like in a program like you have here, you have a range of things you're trying to improve here, help a person gain various skills and good experiences. It's a lot easier to do that if their anxiety is, is kept low and their relational function starts to improve. So it's something you can kind of add into a complex kind of residential programs like this. And we've done that in Norway uh, and a colleague has done that in Netherlands and two quite successful programs there, uh, residential programs.